Hi, welcome to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck, and I'm Renee Marie, and this is going to be a rockin' show on Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. Um, I really have a few thank yous to give to some of the people that we've met in the last two weeks have been astronomical as far as connections for the telethon and, and just really blessings to meet along the way. Um, but first, I want to... Um, give a shout out to all the fathers in the uh, world. Tomorrow is Father's Day. And, um, and it really is important to me to thank my father on Father's Day. My father was a gift from heaven. Um, he really was. He was a blessing to me. He gave me unconditional love. Um, he passed on in 2012. But he passed on on a day that really was a wink from himself and from God for me to continue to do what I do. Um, he passed on on April 8th, which was a day of my stroke, April 8th. So it, there's no, no coincidence in, coincidences in life. Um, I was blessed to, um, from the beginning to end with my father, and he's still guiding me and still really being an inspiration to me. And he tells me what to do and what not to do. And, and uh, so I want to thank my daddy for being my daddy and still being my daddy. And um, sorry. <clears throat> Anyway, so I really want to thank all the all the fathers in the world. Even if you're not really um, biological father, you're still a father to people. Um, you support them. You show them love. You you show them support. You give them guidance. You give them some tough love once in a while. That really is important. Sometimes tough love is more important than. Uh, just showing someone you love them when you're giving them direction. It is the way you share those words with people. Um, I've learned from, of course, um, one of my confidants in my life, Dominic Cordelesa, who was a, a blessing to me to teach me, who taught me how to defragment my brain, which is a big part of today's show um, with uh, our special guest who is live on the set, Liz Giordano. We're, we're honored and privileged to yeah. have Liz on the show. Um, and of course, we're going to be having um, a special guest phone interview from Dr. Uh, Max Gomez, who uh, has a, been astounding in the in the medical industry for correspondence for a number of TV programs, and we're going to find out what his connection is to the, um, uh, to, let me see, the uh, Head Injury Association, um, because Liz actually got him to call in today, so we're, we're blessed as far as that. Um, uh, you know, before we, be, like I said, before I begin, I really want to thank a few people and you could take a whole shot of us while I'm thanking everybody because this has to do with um, with uh, with them um. so let me let me introduce to the panel on the roundtable discussion before we do some thank yous to everybody of course this is Liz Liz, Gi yeah. Liz Giordano she is the special guest today and we're really 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 honored and privileged to have you as a part of our panel today well I'm honored to be here with you oh, thank, thank you thank so you. much thank you and of course we have Judy Marlowe Routway who is <laughs> I cannot tell you, I keep saying that and I keep thanking God for Judy because she really is the one that does the legwork, does the legwork and, and behind the scenes you have to need someone to do behind the scenes work but we're going to put her up front because it's it's because of Judy that Liz uh, Giordano is a, part, a guest today and she of course, uh, Liz got uh, Dr. Uh, Max Gomez to be a part of our interview. Um, so thank you, Judy. You're thank you so welcome. much. And uh, then we have my co-host, <laughs> Bobby Baby Walker. <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby and I um, were uh, guests this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, on a program called The Wise Guys Show. Can you show the um, one of the photos? One of the photos that I think it's the... Um, there you go. There's the wise guys. Oh my God, they they are hysterical. They're they funny. They're they're loving. They're just right, Bobby. Yes, they are. They they crack me up. They crack you up. They just they really have a discussion about laughter and good humor and and the sky's the limit on what yeah. they what they what they talk about. Right. The sky is the limit. I mean, right. it is incredible. Um, show another photo of theirs. Um, there's the photo that was promoing myself and Bobby and actually another gentleman um, who was on the show 
who I think his name was Ron. Rit- Ron. Ron. A phenomenal. He was a vet. I believe, like yourself. Yes, he was a vet, Vietnam vet. Right. And he sings and all that, and he is phenomenal. There's the website for the, um, the Wise Guy um, uh, show. So you hook on to, their, to the website. I'll actually, also actually run it across our, um, our show, bottom of our show, when I do the, um, when I do the clips. And, uh, okay, so this is the one I wanted to make sure we knew was going up. Show another clip. This is the clip of all of us after the show. We had such a, I mean, by that time, we were like all bonded. Yeah, all bonded, yeah. all friends. We're going to help each other. We're going to do what we got to do. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go with them. Like, we just all clicked, all of right, us, right? right? Yep. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. So let me just look to make sure. Um, and, and I want to shout out to Tommy Scala, who actually... Um, who was the connection for the right. Wise Guys show? Right. Unfortunately, he wasn't there um, Wednesday, but uh, he wasn't. You know why he wasn't there? Because his boat broke down. Because he goes, <laughs> fit, he goes on a boat and he doesn't bring any oars. <laughs> <laughs> he, t- he gets me on the phone the next day. He's like, I don't pay any oars out and there. I'm like, why don't you bring any oars? What happens? <laughs> what happens if your boat? Your boat that's, what happened. that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> broke down and he didn't have any oars to go back. So he had to wait for uh, somebody to come in. Yes, there. yes, yes. <laughs> and actually, um, I mean, it, the, the connections in life, the way that you connect with people is astounding. Um, we met Tommy through Richard Radisi. Richard Radisi is my manager, one of my managers, and um, booking agents, I should say. Um, and he, he what lives in Buffalo and he came down and he said, come out to dinner with us. We'd like to, you know, we'll get together. And actually we, we all went to a location right by my work, prime 15, Oop. <laughs> live TV. And, um, and to make a long story short, we all met and Tommy and I started talking afterwards when we were on his back, back patio. Right. And it turns out that Tommy and I used to be managed by the same board member of my foundation, Jean Parada. Oh, what a small world. What a small world. <laughs> and it took somebody from Buffalo to, to, tell you that. To, to bring down, to connect us. I mean, it was, and, and actually, and then Richard and I connected because on our last show, Louis um, Venaria, who... He's breathtaking with his voice and his personality. Um, left the show when he called Richard up, who was managing him at the time, and said, "Like you know, um, um, you know, Renee is really a talent. Why don't you talk to her?" And Richard, so so like the the, the connection, and <laughs> so we have had an astounding two weeks in the industry. Um, and I want to give shout out to Richard Radici and. Um, and Mason Reese for two performances that were that we went to at the cutting room. Tommy Scala was performing there, right, Bobby? Right, all right. Tommy Scala and uh, uh, yeah, his his comedian friend who opened up for him. Right, right, right. I'll post that on the W or on the uh, on my posting. But I also wanted to thank him for for uh, Louis Venaria because them for the Louis Venaria show because he Vinet. Louis Venari. 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 Sorry. Um, sorry, Louis. Yeah, sorry, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he did an original show the other day. Yes. And it, it blew was, everybody away. It was, it was great. It was great. So that was his kickoff to his originals. And we're going to actually start um, a tour for 2016 for Louis. So yeah. I just really wanted to make sure that I, you know, thanked everybody. Let me just make sure that I. I thanked everybody that I needed to. Um, telethon, the wise guys. Yep. So, so we're gonna go on to our. So thank you, everyone. We we love you. We're so honored and blessed to have connected with you. And the the sky is the limit for the future with all of us because we've all connected. So it, it's I can't tell you. Um, we'll talk about it because actually all of them are gonna be on the show. Well, oh, you know what I did want to say before I I cut out is. Um, Mason Reese actually manages a, uh, a young girl named CJ. CJ, I think. CJ. CJ. I think so. She is. She does originals, 
and she has got it. She, her songs, her stage presence, it is phenomenal. So, um, so it is, it is really a remarkable, um, she's really remarkable. We're, we, you know, we hope one day to get her on our show because she is, she's very talented. Um, do we have to go to break? Huh, Vicky? I don't think so, right? Okay, because I just saw him put that. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna roll right into our discussion with Liz Giordano. Liz, can I call you Liz? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Liz, or Miss Giordano. No, 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 I have to leave that. <laughs> so, Liz, um, you know, let's talk about, you. let's give us a little bio on, on, on well, you know, a short version of, because we, we want to, we want to, you know, we want to get to the point, you know, how you got involved. But give us well, a little we past gotta, we history. We want to get to know you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Give us well, a Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> Reader's Digest. Nutshell. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's really nothing in my life that would have brought me to where I am today as the CEO of the Head Injury mm -hmm. Association. My background is in psychology and juvenile d justice. Wow. I have worked with kids most of my adult professional life. I ran a juvenile correctional facility for the state of New York and upstate in Dutchess wow. County, and then worked at Mercy First, which is in Syosset for abused and neglected kids. It's an wow. agency at, it, within the child welfare system. Um, and then one day I decided that I was gonna move on from Mercy First after being there for about 12 years, and I was gonna open up my own business. Uh, staff development and training within not-for-profit human services. Wow. And I never, I never got there. <laughs> I never got there. Got I was real, recruited. Huh? I was recruited by the Head Injury Association. And I and said... how did they know? I'm just curious. I, like, what was the connection that they... It's so funny. I, we were, I was at our annual fundraiser, which was a golf outing in August in 2005. And the president of the board of directors announced that this was my last golf outing. They gave me a bouquet of flowers. The next morning, I got a call from a gentleman who I didn't know who had bought a ticket to the golf event wow. and said, you know, there's this not-for-profit in Suffolk County, and they really need a CEO. And I heard this about you, that about you. We'd like to invite you to interview. I said, oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Not at all. You know, I wouldn't be leaving here if I wanted, wanted another to go, right, job. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, I really want to go out on my own and do staff development and training. I'm already incorporated. He said, well, why don't you just come and speak to a few board members? So I reluctantly said yes because I thought I was wiser than they were, mm -hmm. which I am not. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I said I could go and I could sign them up. I could f hire as right, a client. Right, I right. will recruit <laughs> their CEO. I will reorganize their management team. Yeah, and then I'll train their and staff. Right, and right. turn it all around and then move on and go next. And I'll have another client. And I went to the interview and they said to me... Uh, well, why don't you just think about it? Because I didn't say that up front. I just said, I don't think we're a good match. First of all, the mission and the CEO have to be synonymous. Right. And I don't, and, and I can remember saying it to the execs on the board of directors. I don't even know anyone with a traumatic brain injury. Right. I know nothing about TBI. Mm. And they said to me, well, while you're learning traumatic brain injury, you could use your skills, your business skills, to restructure and reorganize the agency. And it was being challenged by some government funding at the time. Mm -hmm. And you could get us back on track. And I said, well, I, I don't know if this is the right mission for me. I've always worked with children, and this is an adult program. And I think I would really miss not being involved in child welfare. Right. right. So just think about it. Just think about it. So I left, and within a day or two, they called me back, and they said, come back and talk. And this is when I was going to sell them on this agency being a client of mine. Right, right. So I suggested to them 
recommend that we do a six month memorandum of understanding. What's that? Um, a business agreement that I would go for six months, not full time. I would work for other companies as well. Right. And I would reorganize them, recruit their CEO, and do staff development right. and training. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know this November is my 10th anniversary. All right. Yeah. And I want you to know, speaking as a former executive recruiter, it's when... <laughs> When um, somebody that we recruit gives the client a hard time, it makes the client more anxious to hire them. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't do it deliberately. I really <laughs> wanted to have them be there, but on a consultant relationship. Mm -hmm. And they said, absolutely not. Just come on board. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I signed a short period of time contract. And here I am 10 years later. It turned out to be the most wonderful employment yeah, I have ever yeah. had. Wow, it wow. is a joy to be there. Wow. And if I ever think, wow, I'm having a bad day, or Look at woe Sella. is me, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. what a struggle, yeah. I just walk around our day program, I go visit a group home, and I go, thank God, how lucky am I? Yes. And, you know, and the courage of these right. people just, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not entitled to be afraid of anything after I've seen what they do. And I was very it. impressed when you gave me a tour. I think it was around 2005, 2006. Yeah, you I gave just me got a tour. There. I had no <laughs> idea you just got wow. there. That's incredible. <laughs> so we're going to have to go to break. But before we go to break, I actually um, forgot to light a candle. Um, can you take a whole screen? Okay. Um, you know, June is Aphasia Awareness Month. And um, we asked that everybody light a candle every day. If I can light this. Shake it. Okay, and I'm going to hold the candle for you, too. That might help. Um, so that... We well, should pass this to Bobby, probably. Yep, Bobby. <laughs> so what, we're going to light this candle. Oh, oh, there we go. We're going to light... Because June is, a fa June is Aphasia Awareness Month, and we really wanted everybody um, to light a candle just in awareness of uh, aphasia and... Um, which is um, so a result of a brain injury or stroke, which is really why Liz is here and what, why she's on our, our, our TV program, um, because we really believe that awareness is the biggest, um, the biggest tool you know, in, 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 in helping people to understand. So um, with that, we're going to go to break, and we'll be right back. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. Old Spice Body Spray can change a regular smelling man into a man who smells like power. Now, how is this? Ah! Wow, you know what? I actually do feel more power. Potato chips! <laughs> pa -pa 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 power! It's me!
Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with that computer thing. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's ladies' night in, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas. With a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this. You'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. No, shh. Trust me, I'm a professional. And last, and most important, Salsa Blue Tequila. Now, you mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what's up. Welcome back to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. Um, we're really having a wonderful discussion, important information about, um, about head injuries um, and uh, traumatic head in injuries. And uh, Liz Giordano is our special guest. But before we go to that, um, I got so emotional before I forgot to show the photo of my daddy. So can you bring up the photo of my daddy? There he is. That was uh, a, very important, um, a very important moment in time for me because... Um, my father never really came to watch me sing or perform anywhere. He was so busy in his life. And at this point in our lives, we, he, um, he finally found, not, not, not that he found the time, but he, he had the time to come. And uh, he came and watched me in my first, um, my first uh, actually it was the first beginning of this journey. It was done at St. Anthony's Church. And it was uh, really the beginning of this foundation and, and uh, the telethon and, and the whole process. So uh, that was my daddy. Anyway, so, um, so back to our conversation with our wonderful roundtable discussion here. So, Liz, um, we were talking in the break. There, there are more locations. That, why don't you give us, share with us the locations that you have? For sure. The, ha for, first of all, we have a day program, and that's located in Hop Hog, and we have another one in Medford. And that's where folks who have suffered a brain injury can come Monday to Friday from 9 to 3. Uh, we provide transportation to wow. and from, and we have a wonderful staff there and lots of different activities. It's a clubhouse model, so you could come, you could sit in the computer room, email your friends, wow. Wow. help you. You could do horticulture and planting. Um, we have an art therapy program and music as therapy. We have a Zumba teacher, a yoga right. instructor, wow. and it's just a fun place. And when you walk around, and we have about 250 wow. people I in heard. the tent, just smiles everywhere. <laughs> smiles everywhere. But in addition don't to you, that... Before, before you get to that, and I wrote this in one of my notes to talk to you about, <coughs> don't... And you just actually touched on this before a break, but we get so much more at it from them than we oh, give. Than we, we, give. we give. It's not we, even close. Not even close. We not even close. It is amazing. The and and I say that to people who even may consider volunteering and say, "Well, I'm not really sure I want to do that." All I could say to potential volunteers and volunteers will validate it that you give back you get back twice as much you and just, then some it, as you get 
Yeah. They just brighten up your day. It's yeah. the courage. The courage and the, the, the energy. Yeah. The, and they just, they bring hope to the world. I mean, hope that, that what they're going through that they, they just they don't they just fight they fight yeah, for they their fight. lives yeah. yes. and they keep, truly are survivors yeah. mm -hmm. you know yeah. very often we talk about cancer survivors but brain injury survivors have amazing resilience yeah. it's just wonderful what they do wow and we're going to talk to Dr. Matt Gomez about his book The Healing Cell yes, is that what it's the called healing but cell. it's very interesting to I can't wait to hear He'll his philosophy <laughs> on that but again, Okay, continue about the uh, So in locations. addition to the day program, and we have a large center. Judy, since you were last at our visiting us, we moved. So now we have a 50,000 square foot I've building gotta come and see in it. Hop Hog on Kennedy right. Drive. I'd love to see it. And I say that publicly. Anybody who would like to come and visit us is welcome. You can right. find our address right. on the website, 300 Kennedy Drive. Right. Come, give us a call. We'd love to give a tour. Right. Um, because you know what? That will, you know, that's the, that when you're hands on. You can find out what what it really means. You That's know, right. It's yeah. almost it's almost like, um, you know, nine eleven. You 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 can never understand it unless you were there. Right. You can never understand it unless you're a part of that right. situation. So you know. Plus, the people who come for our services are so happy when they know other people know about them and where they are and what they do. So I really encourage folks to come and take a tour. Doesn't mean you have to volunteer. You don't have to do anything. No. Just come yeah. Just and say presence. hello. Just your Yeah. And we all believe, or I, you know me, I, I honestly believe that one of the biggest tools to recovery is love. That's right. Love and support. And no because, joy, yeah. because, because I know as a stroke survivor um, that nobody could do it for me. And that's really why I'm an ambassador at um, Valley Hospital at Ridgewood. Oh, in Ridgewood. wonderful. And um, that was really one of the keys to them, you know, allowing me to do it. It's because I can say to a stroke survivor or, 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 or someone that has a brain trauma that. that, you know what, you have to do it yourself. <clears throat> you you got to push through it. We'll support you. We'll, we'll, we'll help you get there. But you're the one that has to do it yourself because I can't do it for you. I can't do it so for right. you. And they must feel so. very encouraged when they mm -hmm. see how well you sure. did. And you can say, I've been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that, that's, it's very surreal to me yes. to, to go around in the hospital because and, and, I really remember being there. I really remember being in that bed and looking up mm -hmm. and my brain being confused and, and scrambled and not, it's, it's very, very surreal so, for yeah, me, very, imagine. very surreal for me to be in that place. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I understand it. I understand it. So what other places do you have? And then in addition to that, we operate about 10 group homes. There's six wow. bed facilities be, uh, among, they're kind of spread out between Nassau and Suffolk counties. Wow. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have one near the studio. We're about to renovate uh, wow. in Dix Hills, not too far away. And in addition to that, we have about 20 two-bed condominiums. Wow. So we will provide 24-hour nice. staffing oh in gosh. a two-bed apartment, and we will help with the cooking and the hygiene. That's wonderful. Some people need assistance in feeding. We mm -hmm. will do whatever it takes in order for people to have an independent Lifestyle. That's so, great. so it's, so it's residential and, day program, right? And then we have counseling as right. well, right? And and this is this is the side that's really difficult is who finances it. Yeah, um, because because you know as as much as everyone's trying to support them, yeah. you still need money to do right. it. That's right. right, and that's a, that's you know. So tell you to know, us about uh, that. The main funding source is New York State. It's New York State Office of people with developmental disabilities and New York State Department of Health. But as you could imagine with any government funded facility, you and I don't want to live there, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so the fundraise dollars enable us to do all the special things we do to have a home in an environment. And when you see the building at 300 Kennedy, you will go, wow. And you especially, Judy, because you, you will see, I saw, you see the saw where we came from. 
It is just wonderful. The, they just love the environment. The environment says people care. Well, you know, and it's be, fun when you, dollars. when you when you when you surround yourself with beauty, you just feel lifted That's up. That's what it is. Yeah. You feel True. lifted up. You don't feel like you're. Um, you're a nothing, you know. If that's you put right. them, if you throw them in a housing that doesn't take you don't care of them, and you, yeah, you feel like right. you know. Um, and and that plays a huge part in recovery. It plays a Absolutely. huge part in recovery. Absolutely. So it's it's just crazy. We go to Broadway shows. Oh. Um, who came to see us? Debbie Gibson comes. Yes. Oh, that's so right. Integrate them into the and community and performs with our choir. Uh, we went to see uh, Rock of Ages with. Uh, he was on, um, oh, I'm, I'm blocking his name. That's okay, the gentleman that, that was in. That gentleman, yeah. he was also in Jekyll and Hyde. He right, came right. and yes. sang with uh, oh. uh, Murlis, is a Constantine. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He came yeah. several times. Yeah. Um, they go to all the sporting stadiums. We go Jerry to Yankee. Klein. Matt, right. Jerry Cooney, yeah. uh, wow. f- former football players, especially with everything that's going on with post-concussion syndrome among the NFL players. So we have a couple of NFL guys who really reach out to right. us. Right. Of course, Jerry in boxing right. and Rich Caster, former Jet, wow. comes often. So wow. everybody's so wow. kind to us. It's so, amazing. Yeah. Talk to us about the founders. The founders, it's an interesting story. You know, I, I have a, I say there's a book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Right, it's right. what they do with it after the experience. Um, Head Injury Association was founded a little more than 25 years ago by two parents um, whose son suffered a traumatic brain injury. Uh, one was a pedestrian. He was about 12, 13 years old who was run over by a car. And the other one was in a car accident. And he was a little bit older. And they were both, they didn't know each other. They both lived on Long Island. Families never heard of each other. And they uh, were rushed to the hospital. And the hospital did its job and its job keep them alive. That's all, you know, we say thank God the hospital kept them alive. Because when you come and you see some of our people, they weren't supposed to live. And now they're walking around. They'll answer it. They'll answer Okay. They're walking around and they have a wonderful lifestyle. And, of course, with challenges. Uh, so uh, these families met. And after rehab, um, and it was a lengthy rehab, they said, where are we going to go with our sons? Right. And they said, we want the best group home in the, in the country. And right. they did independent research, still not knowing each other. And then they wound up in a group home in North Carolina. And that's where they met. And they said, we're from the Gold Coast on Long Island. Right. What are we doing in, in North, North Carolina? Carolina. Right. There was no group home for their sons Mm. and they said let's go build it they came back they went to albany and albany said you start it and we'll license it wow and that was the beginning and now thousands of people and i read gone through and i read they still attend they the two the the two two sons sons still still attend. attend they live in the same group home with four other TBI survivors, wow. their dads and moms are still on our board of directors, wow. and it wow. is because of them we were able to buy this big, beautiful building. Wow, that's incredible. It's that, a great that's, story. It's, it's very touching. It's very touching. Um, Dr. Mas, Max Gomez has just called us in. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Dr. Max Gomez, and we're going to continue our conversation with Liz Giordano. We'll be right back. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. 
after all the candles are blown out, after the last toast of the night. Cambridge Paving Stones with Armor Tech stand the test of time. Beautifully designed, built to last. Only Cambridge Paving Stones have Armor Tech, our unique process that produces a rich, distinctive color. Create your own memories with Cambridge Paving Stones. Visit CambridgePavers.com. Cambridge Paving Stones with Armor Tech. Welcome back to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. Uh, we're here with the roundtable discussion with uh, Liz Giordano, Judy, Ju Judy um, Marlo Rotway, and Bobby Baby Walker, BBW, my co-host. And on the phone, we have um, Dr. Mac Gomez. Um, thank you so much, Doctor, for attending and joining us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. So um, Liz was actually the one that connected all of us. Tell us a little bit about the um, connection between yourself and the Head Injury Association and how you got involved with them. Well, it's, I mean, it, it, in a way it kind of goes back to, to what I studied back in school. I'm a PhD neuroscientist and neurophysiologist uh, by, by training, and that was my, that was my background. And, um, you know, I guess I don't even remember how far back Liz and I go back. It's been, it's been quite a while. But when she started talking to me about uh, head injury and brain injury, I realized how important it was because, you know, there are so many parts of, there are a lot of parts of the body that if you injured, if you just take care of them and wait for a while, they heal. But the brain uh, doesn't always come back a hundred percent. And you know, we've got, uh, we've got to kind of take care of the squash up there. And, and so. There are, we have to worry about concussions, we have to worry about helmets and helmet laws and uh, sports injuries and so forth. So there's, there's just a lot of things that we really have to um, be aware of, I guess, when it comes to head injuries. Um, and also rehabilitation and taking care. We, we've learned over the years that uh, the brain actually can rewire and rehab and, and get better even years after a brain injury, which is kind of a relatively new uh, finding. We didn't we didn't quite realize that whether it's a, a stroke or a, or a whack on the head. We've learned that we can actually rewire the brain a long time after the uh, initial injury, and that's kind of new and exciting information as well. And how do you how do how do we do that? How do we like what's the process to rewire the brain? Well, the the older you are, the harder it is. Uh, the, the young brain has something called plasticity, which is sort of the fancy way of, uh, of saying that you can rewire a brain and that the brain sort of figures out ways around the damage, if you will. Um, in stroke there, for example, there have been a couple of ways, and, and you can sort of do this the same way with, uh, with brain injuries. But stroke, if you've got a specific area that's injured, say the left side is paralyzed, um, and you've been using the right hand uh, instead of the left hand, you kind of constrain the right hand and force the person to use that left side and force them and force them. It's a very tedious and frustrating uh, kind of process, but eventually the brain actually starts to compensate and rewire a little bit and you get some of that function back. So Dr. Gomez, that means that you have to retrain the brain, right? Exactly, sure. Okay. So you're telling me I have to tie my... Because I had a stroke. I don't know if you knew that about me. Oh, I didn't know. I had a massive stroke. Um, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. Um, I suffered aphasia. So, um, so, and I actually... I used to use my right side more. Sure. But life has become so busy that I don't take the time. I focus my energy on my right side. So I come, become ambidextrous in my writing and my use of my right and my left side. 
Yeah. So, um, so I, I, and I actually believe what you're saying. I actually know it to be true um, that I need to use my right. I need to. I need to. I need to think. Well, it comes from the brain. Mm -hmm. It comes from the brain being able to be aware that to use my right side. So it's kind of a exactly. brain a brain chain that you have to uh, do. It so. doesn't necessarily happen that you've got to kind of push it in that direction. You have to you have to force it and encourage it. And, and again, it's hard and it's frustrating. And the natural tendency is just to use a side that's working. Um, but you you can actually rewire it if you force yourself to push and push on the side that's been impaired. Now with brain injury, it's sometimes a little bit different because often a brain injury. As, as Liz will tell you, is a much more global meaning yes. kind of the entire brain has sort of been, you know, whacked and, and is, is kind of dysfunctional. And so right. that's a little bit different because right. then that's more of a thinking and cognitive, sometimes also, you know, motor skills and things, but it's often a much broader injured area or it's, it's global as opposed to a specific, specific area of the brain that's been injured in a... Uh, in a stroke, so it uh, doesn't always work with brain injuries. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I understand that. That's uh, when, yeah, yes. So, um, so talk to me. I mean, Liz, well, how did you connect with the doctor? How did you meet the doctor? I think it was a fundraising event for a child welfare agency where I previously worked. Uh, Mac has, Max has also done stories about kids at risk and lots of issues. Right. You know, I think one of the things he does so well is to take complicated issues like we just right. spoke right. about right. and bring them to the public <clears throat> in a very understandable and embraceable way. So we met years ago at a fundraiser, and then I, being the person who needs all the help I can get fundraising, right. can continued to call upon him over the years and uh, that's what brought us to where we are today wow wow so um, dr. Gomez tell us a little bit about your book I'm very interested in in and we, you know we just I guess we just touched on it rewiring and so talk to us about the healing cell well it, the, the healing cell refers to stem cells adult stem cells you know when when I went to med school there was really no such thing as an adult stem cell you know we were we were taught that uh, you're born with all of the brain cells and all the heart cells you're ever going to have. And then, of course, we spend most of our college years trying to kill it off with tequila and you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few other things. But I remember it's, uh, those days. Really in <laughs> and just in the last maybe even less than 10 years that we've learned that we have stem cells in almost every tissue in the body, in fat, <laughs> in skin, in brain, and heart. And, uh, and so the trick is that these cells are kind of what renew and replenish us. There's just not enough of them or they're not stimulated enough sometimes to uh, compensate for large injuries like a stroke or, or, or brain injury of, of some sort. But adult stem cells have now are really the standard of care, for example, what we call bone marrow transplants, or really stem cell transplants. It's the stem cells that are in bone marrow right. that replenish that. So for certain cancer therapies, adult stem cells have become uh, pretty much the standard of care. But they're now being used and tested, you know, and these are at various stages of, of uh, you know, they're not quite ready for prime time, so they're at various stages. But um, in cardiac and coronary uh, applications, for example, um, they're taking stem cells and through, you know, there's a lot of different techniques and a lot of different approaches, but putting stem cells back into the heart to repair damaged heart muscle after a heart attack, for example, to rebuild heart muscle um, in, and heart failure, that sort of thing. And um, I think cardiac applications are probably going to be the first, but we're seeing stem cells being used to grow new skin uh, in uh, burns to uh, regrow bone and uh, can make custom bone applications to regrow cartilage, uh, for example, in osteoarthritis in the knee and the shoulder and the hip. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty exciting time. These are stem cells that we all have, and because they're quote-unquote adult stem cells, that means we, they don't have that moral or ethical issue that a lot of people have a, have a problem with embryonic stem cells because embryonic stem cells come from, from embryos and, and there are people who believe that taking stem, using those 
those embryos to uh, generate or to utilize their, those stem cells is the destruction of life, you know, and so it depends on, on what your personal religious and moral beliefs are, but these other cells don't have those those issues, and um, it seems that with through different manipulations, those adult stem cells might just be uh, as, as powerful and as potent um, in many ways, and perhaps in most ways, as uh, the embryonic stem cells. So it's an exciting time. They're being used for all sorts of things, everything from you know, the, the applications for things like Alzheimer's and stroke are a little bit further behind mm. um, than they are in, in some of these other uh, applications. And that's partly because you can stick in the, in the brain, for example, if you're going to repair an area that had a stroke, right? Right. Put right. stem cells in there, and they you can actually get them to form new brain cells or neurons uh, in the brain. But that's only, in the brain, that's only half the trick. Um, right. You got. You have to get them to make the appropriate connections in different right. places, right? right? And then, then we have to do the work to get it there. That's why places like the Brain Trauma Center, the, you know, association is really, really important because it it takes the discipline and the practice and the ongoing uh, recovery to 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 create that. Am I correct? Yeah. That that's sort of what encourages the proper connections to to be formed and, and that's the that's the key and the hard part um, in places like the spinal cord um, they've actually used stem cells uh, to restore mobility and so in, in rats at this point not so much uh, in I've humans, heard that in rats. but severe spinal cord injury where the where the rats are paralyzed in the lower extremities and they put stem cells in there and they help guide the nerve fibers to make new connections again mm. so it's a it, it's all in the, in the devil is in the details. There's going to be a lot of figuring out what the best ways are of doing these things. But the research is going like gangbusters. There's probably, uh, the last count I heard was somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 clinical trials going on right now using um, let me, um, let me ask you stem something. cells in a whole range of uses. Because I, I'm not, I'm not medical and medical wise at all. So, so the stem cells are something that we have within our own bodies, or there's something that need to be implanted from somebody else. Well, both actually. We have them in our own bodies, and so there are ways of extracting them from our bodies, um, and either multiplying them sometimes in the lab outside, uh, and then putting them back in. Or there are companies that are uh, extracting stem cells and then uh, basically generating generic stem cells, turning them into uh, kind of off-the-shelf type of uh, drugs, if you will, instead of drugs or cells um, that can be used to be put back in to uh, treat perhaps heart attacks, perhaps growing cartilage. Again, there's a whole variety of, of, of different approaches that are being tried, and the key is uh, getting the right ones and putting them in the right places in the right circumstances. What's cool about cells is when you put them in kind of the right neighborhood, they right. sort of know what they're supposed to do and what they're supposed to become. It's amazing. It's amazing how um, they're alive. Right. You know, it's something that's alive that it kind of knows where it needs to go yeah. and attach to and... It, it light, it's just medical is so amazing to me. Yeah. Nature is a lot smarter than we are, believe it or not. Absolutely. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> so, doctor, let me ask you a real smart question. Sure. I warn you, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, these uh, clinical trials that they're uh, doing, uh -huh. uh, do any of them affect endorphins in the brain? Well, maybe indirectly. I mean, they're not really going after endorphins directly it depends on what they're you know where you put them and, and what they do but i don't know that they necessarily directly affect endorphins unless they become endorphin producing uh cells, cells. in the brain or they right. develop uh, endorphin receptors depending on where you put them so okay. uh, you know not directly but they could be part of that of that system depending on what they become in the brain okay Wow, this, this, Thank you. it really, really has been very, um, very exciting, very exciting okay. that, that something like the healing cell um, could be a really a, revolu a revolutionary, um, remarkable 
new way that the uh, medical is taking it. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, the part that we didn't even discuss at this point is that they, they're also being used for a lot of anti-aging and cos cosmetic purposes. Wow. 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 I tell you all know, my friends, you don't can, be old. You can be young, beautiful, and have good cartilage. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, we're going to have to go in a few minutes, but I really want to know if you met um, Father Pope Benedict. Uh, I met uh, Father Benedict, uh, the, the Pope, uh, on a couple of occasions, actually. We presented a copy of, uh, of the, the first book. book, right? And also, I, I helped organize and, and moderate uh, parts of um, two international conferences on stem cell research. Wow. Both were uh, co-sponsored by and held that, believe it or not, in the Vatican. Wow. So we, we actually had a, a private audience with him at, uh, at some point as well. And we just, uh, a little over a month ago, uh, got approval, uh, or the blessing, if you will, uh, from Pope Francis to hold the third international conference. Wow, uh, that's on incredible. Stem cells and regenerative medicine, and that's going to be next April uh, in Rome at the Vatican. Wow, I have a very dear, um, I would call him my friend, um, his name is Father Gino Silva. Did you ever meet Father Gino Silva? Uh, I don't think I have. No. He's um, the Pope, I think it was Pope Benedict, I think it was Pope Benedict that um, appointed him as the evangelist lead. I don't know what you'd call it, but the leader of the evangelists. And he's been at the Vatican for a few years. And he has really been, he was a wonderful mentor to me because my I'm a single parent and my girls went to school with him at the beginning of his um, his when he was a deacon and then turned into a priest and he re we always said he's going to be the next pope <laughs> pope chino we call him pope chino pope uh, I, chino. Like, I like that so uh, you know good luck in everything and thank you so much for all the work you do uh, you know as a as a stroke survivor as a you know um, you know an ambassador to stroke and aphasia survivors i really want to give thanks to you for all you do for all of us i mean we can never we can never do what we do without you and be where we are without your work and and yours as well liz well thank you i appreciate that and and you know we need we need people uh, such as yourself survivors who go out and spread the word as well not only um, i mean partly that you can uh, survive and be functional again after a stroke hopefully but uh, more importantly to get people to know what the risk factors are and how to avoid having it in the first place because that's always a better approach yes so um if you don't mind maybe at another time when you're around um i'd love for you to do like a blurb we have a telethon every year and the biggest function for the telethon is awareness for strokes and aphasia we want it we need to join we always say that we're, together we're changing the face of strokes and aphasia around the world because we want people to know that that strokes is not uh, discriminatory it can touch you at any split second and it really plays you know it just it, it impacts your life immediately and changes your life so I we really we've had our first telethon this past March and it was oh my god it was incredible it was I was crying at the end believe it or not <laughs> well actually what you may not know is one of the other hats that I wear I've been a past national board member of the American Heart Association and part of the American Heart Association is also the American Stroke Association. Ah, yeah, well, they, yeah. they, they benefited from part of our telethon. Our telethon. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. good. Yeah, Listen, so. Good work, good work. Hey, it's been great talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you, Doctor. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. We're going to take a quick break. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is.
Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. If you find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation, located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000, or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for multi. How many minutes do we have? Hello, welcome back to Renee Marie Stroke of Luck. I am Renee Marie, that's BBW Bobby Baby Walker. This is our special guest, Liz Giordano. And, we, and this is Judy Marlowe Rotway, who is incredible, to say the least. <laughs> and we were just on the phone with uh, Dr. Mac Gomez, who is just an inspiration to all of us. So, Liz, we can't thank you enough for being on the show. Want to say a few words? Oh, no, the pleasure is mine, and I'm just so fortunate to be surrounded by wonderful people like you, Dr. Max, Judy, Bobby. It's just what it takes. This is what it takes, and thank you for the opportunity. No problem. We're, 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 on, we're honored, and you know, the fact that we all connected today, we're going to make a difference in the world, because my, my, my belief, and I know all my teams and foundations and we believe that together we need to do it. We're not an, it's not about competition. We need, we need the dollars to support us. We, we know that. that. That's a fact. But that's in the backdrop. That's in the backdrop. The money will come when you're doing what you're meant to do and you, you need to do in your life. And this is our calling for all of find us. A way. You find a way. You find a way. So we're going to go right into, we're going to roll out with uh, I Believe in Music because it's one of my favorite songs in the whole world. And, I, and Mac, Mr. Mac Davis, I want to meet you because I want to make this my theme song and I want to sing it with you as a uh, theme. So uh, roll in, Tom. Thank you to Vicky, Tom, the Madhouse TV team, uh, Tommy and Janine. Without you, we couldn't do anything that we do. Let's go. Just sway to the music. Let's go. Here we go. Well, I can just sit around making music all day long. Can't do nobody wrong And who knows Maybe someday I'll come up with a song That makes people want to stop the fuss And in fight and just long I'd love to sing along Let's go I believe in music And I, I believe in love Let's go Music is a universal language and love is the key To find peace and harmony and living in harmony So shake your hands and clap your feet and shake your tambourine Lift your voices to the sky, God loves it when you sing Let's go Believe in music and I, I believe in love. One more time. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe in love. Love is the universal language and love is the key. 
for brother peace and understanding and living in harmony. So take your brother by the hand and sing along with me. Find out what it really means to be young and rich and free. Let's go. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe in love. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe in love. Let's go. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe in love. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe in love. Let's blow our kisses. God bless to everybody. We're blowing our kisses. Let's go. God bless. Have a stroke of luck. God bless to everybody. I believe in love. I, I believe in music. Lord knows that I, I believe. Happy Father's Day, everybody. God bless, Daddy.